All right, our goal for the second half is to define the manipulator Jacobian. So this is this big matrix J that tells us how we relate for the psi. Psi, remember, is the velocity of the end effector and the angular velocity of the end effector from how fast each motor is moving. So how fast each motor is moving is this Q dot. And this is done by constructing this big matrix J, which is a function of the current configuration. Because as we fold our robot up into different shapes, moving one of the joints will have a greater or smaller effect on our linear and angular velocity. All right, so how the J works, you notice that we can break it into two halves. The top three rows are going to be how the N degrees of freedom affect our linear velocity. We'll call that J underscore V, and it's going to have one column for each joint. And this upper half, a reasonably simple compact form, you notice I've got our two little sketches on the right in on blue and red. For a revolute joint, it's going to be a cross product where we're trying to figure out, we're rotating around the previous axis, and then we want to do the cross product that gives us our moment arm that we're revolving around, whereas the linear velocity for a prismatic joint is just we're moving along that z-axis. The lower half is going to have two points as well. If it's a revolute joint, then that joint produces some angular velocity. We've got to do our zi's. One thing you should notice in this entire slide is that I've not written which coordinate frame these are in. If no coordinate frame is given, then it's assumed that these are in the zeroth coordinate frame, that of our base frame. And a prismatic joint can, produces nothing. Well, that's a, you know this is an eye chart, but this is the sort of thing that you should write down for your exam so that you know how to construct this Jacobian. What we're going to do next is we're going to examine how these are constructed. And so the first one I have, this is our prismatic Jacobian, and I've made a, a cute little video for you to watch. So you'll notice here as I slide this manipulator back and forth along this axis here is the 1, 2, 3rd Z axis. Let's watch that again. As we slide along Z2, um, then you'll notice the end effector is sliding in the same uh, translation. It just might be offset by wherever that manipulator is. And so the, the prismatic joint only produces a linear velocity of end effector. It produces no angular velocity. Pretty straightforward. And so you can see this for this manipulator Jacobian. If you've got the prismatic, we're just sliding this joint up and down. Everything beyond that is moving in that same axis up and down. Just might be slid over translated a little bit. So this one is easy to work with. The lower half we've got nothing. Now if we move into the revolute joint, watch what happens when we move a revolute joint. So this is the second degree of freedom. We're rotating around the Z1, this Z1 axis. And as we rotate around it, the end effector traces out a big curve. Because remember, if we rotate a rigid object, every particle on that object is going to trace out a uh, part of a circle. And so here now I'm rotating joint four, and you can see that rotation is also tracing the end effector around a circle. Watch that again. So this is what makes it interesting. These revolute joints produce both a linear velocity and an angular velocity, and we have to understand how both those contribute. Right, and so watch again as this theta 4 moves, we're rotating everything beyond theta 4 is rotating, tracing out part of a circle. So let's watch how that's done. So here is as I, a zoom in on that, um, and watch as I rotate this joint. Ooh, do you see this beautiful room? I made this animation just for you. You can watch that rotate through. What we're rotating is about uh, if we are moving a joint four, so we're moving it at motor speeds, theta four dot, but it's rotating around the previous z-axis, that's z3. And that gives us our angular velocity. It's just theta four dot times z3. But if we want to know the linear velocity, we have to know what is this moment arm that we're rotating around. And that's this yellow arrow right here. In order to calculate that, you find out what is a, a line that goes to the end effector and what is a line that goes to the origin that theta 4 is rotating around. We take the difference of those and we get that moment arm. And then all we have to do is take the cross product of that with the angular axis that we're rotating around and we get our angular velocity. Here's another animation, but this is showing what happens when we rotate theta 2. So watch this beautiful animation I made for you. 
as we rotate that around, we're almost perfectly lined up. You can see that we're rotating around the Z1 axis, which is moving right along this axis here. The speed that we're rotating is theta 2 dot, and so our angular vector omega is going to be theta 2 dot times Z1. Our moment arm, we take the difference between the origin of frame 1 and our ineffective frame. And that difference gives us our moment arm. And so our linear velocity is going to be omega cross r. So again, look at this math that we have. You see that our linear velocity is just your previous z-axis cross product with the difference between on and o1. And here I've drawn that on here. That difference here gives us our r. The cross product then tells us at what speed this particle, this point is moving. To get our angular velocity, it's just going to be what is the axis that we're rotating around and put that into the base frame. So this is zi minus 1 in frame 0. And that's how we build our manipulated Jacobian. And it's rather beautiful, and we can follow this procedure to build it. How this works is every time you want to make a manipulated Jacobian, you need to have the transfer matrix ti in frame 0. And from that matrix, the only thing that we need is the third and the fourth column. We need the third because that tells us which direction, the orientation of our z-axis of frame i in the base frame. And we need the fourth axis here because that tells us where is the coordinate frame i according to the base frame. So we only need these two vectors, vi in frame 0 and oi in frame 0. With that, we can start doing a lot of math. Now is a good time to remind ourselves of you know, what is this T matrix. So Tn of Q, well remember, that is equal to a rotation matrix, what is n in frame 0. It's a function of q. It's also the coordinates of that origin, o n in frame 0, function of q, then 1, and then 0, 0, 0. Now what happens when we take the time derivative of this? Well, we need to know what is r dot n of 0. Well, that is just some skew symmetric matrix around the angular vector omega from 0 to n, 0 comma n, in frame 0 times the current r n and 0. If you wanted to, we can isolate and figure out what s is. s of omega 0 to n 0 is equal to r dot n 0. Then we'd have to multiply on both sides by the transpose of this and just to cancel it out. So you get r n 0 transpose. You can get isolate that by itself. What is the derivative of this o n to the 0? It's a function of q. Well, this is going to be just what is the velocity of that end factor? So that's going to be v n in 0. And so remember, our goal is to figure out what v n of 0 and what omega n of 0 is equal to. And they are equal, we'll call the top half j v, bottom half j omega. We multiply each of those by q dot.